Call the uh, Wednesday, May 12th, that is zoning. Okay, Michael Palmer. Thank you. Everybody turn the line. We've got a green dot. Hello? Okay, I call the order the Wednesday, May 12th, 2021, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, roll call. Sylvia Henry. Roger Frum. Sam Solars. Jessica Ladwell. I was just seeing who was coming in. Just me, <laughs> Okay. You want to just say your name, Justin? You go call. Justin Henry. Chuck Smallwood. Uh, we'll yeah, just make sure we have our microphones on because otherwise we don't pick it up on the camera. We don't have any issues as it is with audio. All right, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For approval of the agenda, Uh, 
shall be constructed with concrete, asphalt, concrete pavers, bricks and compacted sand, uh, class five, or other impervious or semi-impervious service material approved by the city engineer. Um, staff is looking to expand upon the, the list of allowed materials uh, for, for vehicles parked on the uh, side of rear yards. Other cities uh, specify that they allow uh, class five limestone, crushed stone, crushed gravel, or interlocking concrete. Um, staff is seeking feedback on whether, uh, whether we should proceed with preparation of modified design standards to make it easier for residents to be granted a permit. And then the second piece of that, besides materials, was uh, in, in reviewing the ordinance, staff noticed uh, provision that, uh, provision C, that, that the adjacent, when, uh, when someone's looking to go below the required five foot setback, basically that the adjacent property owner can provide a written statement uh, to the to the, the permit applicant uh, and the city, essentially approving placement of the parking pad within the five foot setback, um, as long as it's also uh, pre-approved by the city engineer. Um, staff's kind of legal, uh, I guess, legal analysis of this is that it kind of goes beyond what's allowed in in a city's zoning powers by creating a subjective standard that essentially hands. Uh, a quasi-judicial power to the neighbor as well as the city engineer, um, which is not legal under, um, under I guess, the state, the state authorized uh, planning powers. Uh, this language will need to be amended to, to create a, a, a just one standard, essentially, in the ordinance. Um, and it's a policy question for the planning commission and the city council as to what that minimum setback uh, should be. Uh, so staff is suggesting the following underlying changes to the ordinance, essentially striking out the parts, um, requiring a written statement from the neighbor, pre-approval by the city engineer, uh, just fine-tuning the language a little bit, and then pr proposing uh, for these parking paths a minimum setback of two feet, uh, rather than the current standard of five feet with the wiggle room of, the, uh, the, of uh, getting a, a note getting a basically a approval note from your neighbor. Um, the two feet was merely a suggestion there, and it's a, it's a policy question of what, uh, what the community feels that the minimum setback for uh, these type of parking paths should be. Uh, so the change in this standard will essentially streamline the process for residents, um, and then for anyone who cannot meet the new standard, they would have to apply for, for a variance. That would go through the typical process uh, through the planning and zoning. Um, so by, by creating one standard, it will essentially make the ordinance less restrictive and easier for residents uh, to, to obtain permits. So today we're just looking for your feedback on kind of how this issue came about and what you feel uh, that, should, that that number should be. Minimum setback of two feet is okay as long as it doesn't uh, 
interfere with any drainage or anything. There's a lot of swales in between properties as somebody starts filling it in. Yeah, and item A kind of addresses that. It says the encroachment does not negatively impact drainage utilities or city maintenance access to public improvements. So people are just going to look at the two feet. Just to provide some additional kind of context of why why two feet or three feet or what what might be the right answer um, the thought was that you know you're parking you are parking an RV on a side pad either yourself or your neighbor has a has a fence running along the lot line that two feet or three feet or what, whatever the right answer is that allows for you to maneuver around maneuver around the parked vehicle uh, to, to to wash it to, to access you know to open a door whatever it may be um, if you're right up against a, a privacy fence it's kind of what is the minimum necessary um, to, to be able to kind of legally park it and, and not cause issues for the neighbor are you guys okay with including some of these other um, materials like the classified limestone, crushed stone, crushed gravel, interlocking concrete pavement. That part's kind of covered by previous and semi-previous yeah. material. Yeah. I, I kind of tend to occur, to concur. I thought it was. I thought well, the current ordinance was sort of detailed enough. And I'm yeah. Sure when, when I talked when I talked to the engineers, they were like, "Well, they can put, you know, a whole assortment of things on there. Just, you know." If, if they have a question about it, we can certainly go to the engineer, but they said, you know, they'll pretty much approve anything um, that's along those lines. Semi-impervious can also be compacted dirt. It's a good definition, just so you're aware. So I don't know if you want to add something other than compacted dirt. Yeah, do we want people to be able to do that? I mean, I don't think we should because we'll have a mud hole or right. something. Mud and weeds and it won't be maintained. Right. It'll be good in September and October, but exactly. not <laughs> April. But May. semi previous you can do dirt if you want to. So yeah, I think we should amend that to uh, some kind of ground cover. Or take it up. Okay, we can look into that in terms of what that final language should be that yeah. to, to still include all of those materials, but, but, not to, allow but to make sure that just yeah. a, a dirt surface is not going to fly under yeah. um, well, and it under says semi impervious. That those things have to be approved by the city engineer, and obviously they would not approve that. So. Yeah, but I think it would just be easier if you had the language in there. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to clarify when you're going through this last time, I thought it was going to be put in the language, but it's not. And, uh, Concrete blocks are not considered a parking pad. There's a few in the city that just get cinder blocks underneath the tires. It's an impervious surface. Only oh under the tire. Yep. That's the loophole in this. So some language that way. Say the improved surface has to, has to be like a continuous at surface. least as large as the vehicle or yeah. something along those lines. Is that yeah. the idea? Yeah, like a, yeah, like a continuous surface, and not just blocks. I believe it does. It does specify that it has to be. It does have to be contiguous continuous to the current driveway. That okay. can't be a separate piece of paper. Okay, we'll work on that one too. As far as the two feet, that's going to be kind of tough. If you've got a fifth wheel or big pole behind, you open the door, there goes the fence. Most of them have a 30 inch door. I think that's why we added five foot to begin with. Most of the houses are uh, 20 feet apart. Yeah, as we finalize the language, can can certainly continue to look into what other what other 
other cities do um, for, for their standard, whether, um, you know, if I come across and not, not many cities include a two-foot standard because that's too small, certainly would advise to go with something bigger. At least we get a lot more through there. Essentially, um, where, where it was, you know, there's 
a certain uh, person complains about a certain section of sidewalk is likely to be the one that would be required to get repaired uh, the soonest. Um, another method is community funded repairs. Uh, this is where the municipality takes all responsibility for repairing sidewalks, typically coming out of uh, the general fund or a transportation fund. Uh, that this is an option for, for municipalities that aim to treat all sidewalks as community community-wide assets. Uh, one advantage is it can ease administrative costs compared to uh, relying on individual property owners. Uh, another advantage is that it allows the community to spread out the cost of sidewalk repair over the, over the entire community rather than a sort of a disproportionate burden uh, on an individual property owner. A disadvantage uh, of, of that model is that they typically require, they typically require funds specifically budgeted uh, for that program. Um, and then another is the hybrid, that is kind of a combination of both. Um, this can include like a special service district or a cost sharing program. A special service district is something that would typically be in like a, you know, targeted in a specific area, for example, like a downtown area, uh, might just kind of come together to form a special assessment district or something to, to repair sidewalks kind of collectively in that area. Um, and then, let's see. Lastly, cost sharing program uh, is, is one strategy that municipalities can use to ease the cost burden on individual property owners. Uh, this is where property owners are still assessed for repairs, but perhaps not 100% of the city can pay a portion of the cost. Um, so the, the Planning Commission and City Council will need to decide on a preferred approach to sidewalk maintenance responsibilities and any potential changes to city ordinances. Change, we'll need to consider the desired type of repair program and the funding sources that will be utilized for that. Uh, planning and engineering staff are looking just for a direction in order to uh, determine the cost and financial liabilities that the city will face with, with any potential change. So with that, I guess we turn back to the commissioners um, just to kind of help, help me understand a little bit better where, where this. Um, how the issue came up and um, what, the, what the concerns are with the current situation. Actually, I brought it up, it's been a concern for quite a while. Um, perhaps that notice was put up during the boom. Uh, there was no real oversight. A lot of the sidewalks were improvised, poorly engineered, and uh, have been coming apart for 20 years. packets or the photos that were on the desks here is going along Emerson where it was just repaved. I didn't get out there until well after it quit raining but you can see down the uh, west side of the sidewalk because it tilts really bad to the west. So it runs along there even with the rocks all the way down to the corner of the pools. It pools worse now since they did uh, Charity Circle. The next page is 131 Emerson Avenue. This whole stretch when I first moved in was a ditch. My understanding that when you fill in a ditch to put some kind of structure on it, you do it in four inch lifts in between it compacting. This went in, a bobcat rolled over it a few times. No underlayment, straight clay, and they poured everything on it. That's four to six inches of water at the end of the guy's driveway. And if you look just to the south, that's the storm drain. It is not drained properly since building the structures. Same thing on the other side. You can see the water pooling on both sides of the next storm drain by Jason's Carver Field going south. I didn't take any pictures of First Avenue. Anybody familiar with the area? First Street is either all busted up from the, when the construction was going on, or it's underwater. Well, Chair, the lane has been redone two years. I can't tell you how many years ago. Um, but people on the end of their driveways are still flooded. 
Yeah, there is some drainage on. Uh, because they didn't go down low enough. No, they raised it. And that's crazy. At my corner, they raised it 14 inches. I think they probably did. I don't see why the homeowner should be liable for. For something like that. Yep. I mean, if they <coughs> When I was initially asked about it, when I initially asked about it back in, I want to say 2001, they said that ordinance was in effect for people that abuse or park on the sidewalks. Then it would be their liability, or if they shovel with salt, which there are a few of them. But they don't really feel that. Improper installation should be the problem of the homeowner. Right. That should not be. As it is, if I wouldn't have put drain tile in when I built my house, I guarantee my basement would have flooded this last winter. Well, With the pitch they've got going. This is the property behind me. All this water you see is coming from my corner. That's on the first page, right? No, that's the guy behind me. It all drains to the south and then pools right at the street. And there's quite a few of them around town that have the same issue. I get a list here of And then they had already replaced, the city already went through the expense of uh, replacing sidewalks where the catch basins were repaired. In the original covenant, whose ever property the catch basin was on, was in charge of keeping that clear so it didn't freeze up and bust. Well, there's one there that they've repaired three times. And they replaced the sidewalk. sidewalk or something like that just reinforces my issue with uh, improper installations. Is Wayne aware of this? What's that? Is Wayne aware of this? Not yet. I had pointed out a few issues with him. I had, when they redid Emerson, I told them exactly what it was going to do. They didn't believe me. And at that time, I got the city engineer 100 bucks if I got a five gallon bucket of water and poured it on the corner of Emerson and Crystal. It would end up on the corner of Charity Circle and Emerson. He wouldn't take the bet. And Wayne walked away laughing. That's kind of why I wanted to review this because with all the street repair going on and everything, the streets are going to look really nice because we're going to redo First Street, I guess, this year. Yeah, Second Street and Yeah. You take a drive along there and you look at what the sidewalks look like. Yeah, it looks pretty crappy. Some of them don't even have sidewalks. On second, most of them don't. Yeah, that was part of the big park or trail thing back in the. Uh, when the heck was that? You were chair, park and rec, and they were doing the big push to get all the uh, trails unified so they all flow together. Yeah, they won't ever get it done. No. Because there's property that they can't put a trail to yeah. or a sidewalk. May I ask a question for the planner? I wanted to educate myself a little more about the issue about sidewalks and, and uh, paintings. 
Um, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, um, the tradition was, and, and you know, clearly demonstrated on Monopoly, right, that the uh, sidewalks were the property owner's uh, responsibility and liability. The things changed with an unfunded mandate that came out of uh, Congress called the uh, ADA. And suddenly the cost, uh, you know, roughly double the cost of building a sidewalk and making sure that the ramps are in properly and five foot width and all those kinds of things, the ADA requirements. So any work that we do now in repairing existing sidewalk, is that grandfathered under pre-ADA, or does it have to meet today's ADA standards? That I, I wouldn't be able to answer for it. It's probably a, a good question for the city engineer to do the design stuff, right? right. What the requirements are. But I know that um, I've been at meetings in places where the ADA requirements have been added then to a uh, sidewalk replacement right. project. What I don't know is whether that was a requirement of ADA or whether they were just making that improvement as a part of the project. Sure, no. right. But what well, we can certainly check with the engineer, uh, they would be familiar with what the, okay. what the uh, bottom line requirements are. Well, once we have a better handle on that, right, then I think that for the uh, commission that we, it really changes the nature of individual property funding versus community funding of programs because once you have those kinds of federal requirements coming in, right, that you have no control over, the community has no control over, um, then it becomes a much bigger issue as far as how do, you, how do we help create a law, local law, that uh, protects the community or helps govern this um, for the next 20, 30, 40 years, right? Not just the immediate issues, but long term. And I, I think that that needs a careful look. Um, and I think because of that, we can come back and start getting an idea that the idea of individual mandates on, on repairing sidewalks is kind of passe. I mean, that was good with the horse buggy era, but not valid today uh, because the laws have changed fundamentally. And once we have that, once we have a better understanding of which model we really want to go with um, as a community, um, then, you know, and we, and we do the language right then any developer, anybody who comes in and does construction on any kind of that touches the sidewalks has to comply with the federal ADA requirements. That, that drives the, it's completely different um, bogging force. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an ugly work, but uh, it's something that uh, I, I think we really should address consistently and uh, try to protect the community for the long term. Not that I'm against ADA compliant. I, you know, I worked in FEMA for a dozen years. I, you know, I have seen the impact directly in communities of having done it right. And I think it's really important to do it right and consistently right. Um, so, you know, thank you. Just wanted to you know, ask that question. And a follow-up on that, when they did bust up the corners on the charity, and not charity, uh, Crystal and Emerson, they did put the steel bats in. But the guys did not want to do that on the Emerson side because it's at such an angle. Right. I mean, the grade changes. 2% grade? Yeah, it's way beyond that. Yeah. Because the guys argued until the city engineer at that time. Right told them that's just the way it is. Yeah, then they're changing people's lawns. I mean, it, it's fundamental, it's a big deal. Yeah. And uh, if you talk, start talking about doing road work, all of that great issue has to come, you want to do it right to begin with. Because otherwise, 
shift. You can't do piecemeal because of the federal department stuff. It just and right the, and today it's to the point where you have a little bump strips right on the ramp coming off the sidewalk. Yeah, that's what they put in. And um, and those got changed and enhanced and modified. And so it's, it's I hope it's okay. I don't have a mask on over here. I think we're parking for it. But, Yeah, these are the some some of the you know, and that's a good point with the ADA stuff. But you know, when you drive around, especially this area of town, where it was impromptu sidewalks that just appeared yeah. that weren't done properly, I don't feel should be the uh, Residents of that properties. Well, when, when they get this whole center done, there will be sidewalks on both sides of the street, right? I haven't seen anything of them. Well, down here, on okay, second is out of here, third and center. That's been patched several times okay yeah. and it wasn't done right either, any of those times so is that going to fall on the homeowner according like to this it would have to but yet if eda is kicking in and the state and you know, the county is doing this then they should fix that the sidewalks right yeah. Well, they're and that's the that's the argument I'm making here today. And there's a number of them. You know, the average homeowner something gives, they fix it the best they can. There's a couple of paths out there. One's on uh, Parkview Circle. It literally looks like somebody took some kind of parging or uh, compound and just smeared it, and it just looks ridiculous but there's no set guidelines on how you have to fix something well i know down there on third and center the city did that yeah and you know, when i talked to sean he said he went through the records and he as far back as he could go any sidewalk repair has never been charged to the homeowner except for one where the right. guy parked a 18 wheeler on it and busted it up. Well, and they should pay for it. Yeah. Because that should have to be a lot stronger and deeper. Yeah. yeah, you shouldn't be driving on it in the first place. Right. So that's why I wanted to bring this back up, get some discussion on it, some feedback. So as far as the like repairs, would you recommend that like the city do the repairs and like assess the property owner or the city budget for sidewalks and not assess property owners or I mean because ultimately that would come from tax money if we if we budgeted for it um, yeah. from the levy. Yeah, because the, the city's already taking care of all the trail system and that's abutting people's properties. Mm -hmm. Everybody uses the sidewalks. That's right. We got to shovel them already. Right. <laughs> We're not getting away from that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I found it took my wife two days. I found the original plot map when I bought my property. All the sidewalks are on the other sides of the road. That's why I bought that property. Guess what I've got? One on your side. Two on my side. Oh, one on the front and one on the side. I came home to my side when my saw the wind rolled up into my yard then they came back about a month later and cut the end of my driveway off but i truly feel that the city should continue to pay for the sidewalks unless it's like a semi that's been parked on but then we have to prove that the semi was parked on it's pretty obvious when you look at them yeah <laughs> I mean, I, 
Let me see the third picture you referred to. Yep. If you just take a look down the picture, and you can see that the sidewalk is lower than the green on both sides of it. Yeah, that's all it is the whole way down there. Right, and so the curb, the road and curb is set to be drained into the yard. Yep. Which, you know, is a road design problem. Yep. Right? So, well, the road was existing and then they put the houses in. So, it so now you're, you end up with a set of problems, a design set of problems that's beyond what the homeowner can fix. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's no way that could, you can't even mud jack that. Right, right. So, I, I really think, you know, it's something, some of these problems you're describing here, the, the city has a hand in, has to have a hand in, because it goes right back to Central Island Road and, and Cronin Road, which drives the curb height, which drives the drain heights. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of issues that this highlights. Yeah, and I don't think, was there any kind of inspection done on any type of sidewalks or coaches or trails or anything <coughs> like that when they I would have to install them? The engineering way, and I, I do not, I'm not familiar. So, I know Rob didn't have anything to do with this back in the day, because I gave him garbage from day one. <laughs> so, Jack, can I say one thing? Just flip the switch when you get back. My name's Roy Henry, and I live at 600 Nelson Boulevard. Okay, back 24 years ago when they redone Highway 12, you got to watch who gets the curb and gutter in down there because that area from where I live all the way west, we all had water in our front yards where you could have a swimming pool or ducks in your front yard because the approaches were not made to slant towards the highway. Everything was running into the yards and into people's garages. So I washed all my red rock out and everything. So then I called MnDOT up at Little Falls up there, and they said, well, we don't know anybody that we can get to come and fix this. <laughs> can you find a contractor, they asked me. So I lined up four contractors, and finally a lady came out of St. Cloud, and she says, well, we'll work with you. So I got RC from the BIDOC. They come out and did all the excavating. Then they hired somebody to do the tar, and and redo the curb and gutter all the way from my house all the way to the west end. And that cost me $2,000 to have my driveway black top. But they said they didn't know nobody that could do anything. Then they sent a the guy down here, gets a level out of his truck, a green one, and mine's brown. I said, they both read the same, don't they? He chose this in his truck and he left. <laughs> I mean, that's what we had to put up with. But we got to deal with Baxter, Brainerd, and St. Paul and Monticello because we can't deal with St. Paul on Highway 12. And that's where our stipulation is with everything. And when they told me they couldn't find a contractor to come and do that job, what, what is men not doing out there with our tax money? Yeah, <laughs> general maintenance question how, how does the city want to handle that just when properly constructed things age and need to be replaced no. but they're uh, separate from that uh, is an issue if the, uh, prop, if the facility wasn't installed well and there's a defect uh, of some sort and then the third category is what kind of improvements beyond uh, ADA or otherwise that would need to be addressed and how uh, how you would fund those. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, is there additional staff research you'd like us to work on? I know that the uh, ADA requirement thing is right. one, of the, one of the aspects of that. Uh, is there any other things that we can research um, that would kind of help you come to a recommendation or whatever? See if there is any other precedent for this. I know there's been a lot of building in the last 20 years, boom, for the first eight years of this century, really bad before the burst, and how other municipalities are handling. I can see with a tree root pushing it up, that's, you know, but when it's just blatant 
trying to put a sidewalk in a ditch. <laughs> yeah, well, um, we can certainly probably survey a few of the surrounding communities and just kind of give you some context. Okay. Appreciate it. And I'll talk to um, the city clerk treasurer and see if it's possible to just kind of um, add that to the budget going forward. Um, yeah, no, looking at it citywide, just because most of them are really nice. You had north into Northridge and all that. Totally different contractor that did that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we'd have, to have, we'd have to have the same standards and stuff for everybody in town. So, I mean, if we're going to pay for one sidewalk, we're going to have to pay for all the sidewalks. Um, yeah. when, when they need repair or replacement or whatever. Um, so, that, that would be an issue, and, and we'd have to figure out how much to, to budget for that. Um, but I'm saying there's a lot of them that were properly installed. Right, that won't be repair for a while. Yeah, or, yeah. That you probably won't have to look at. It. I know I live in North Minneapolis and them sidewalks haven't been touched in 50 years. Right, right. Well, well, chair, just one. I'm sorry, go ahead. So hopefully there's more of that than uh, destroyed sidewalks. Yeah, <laughs> just, I, I wonder if it'd be useful too to have um, maybe a little brief. Uh, summary from the engineer as to what steps they go through in terms of uh, reviewing plans and inspecting the improvements. I'm assuming, based on my experience, over the years that's improved, but um, I wonder if that would be helpful to have if, if you're interested in hearing that. Yeah. The problem that I was in construction for way too many years, so I've got hardware in my spine, but uh, it looks really good on paper. After that, nobody really cares until there's an issue. And they probably had it written up properly back in the day. I think it was Bolton and Mank back then, in fact, too. But somebody cut corners and it didn't get inspected. Well, over there on Emerson, where you live, isn't that street narrower than the rest of them? No, that's when they redid it, they widened it out. So it's all one width now. But now if they start, they want to do from uh, Charity Circle south to First Street, if they put curb and gutter in there, the only vehicle that guy's going to get out of his driveway is his four-wheel drive Ford <laughs> after a good rain. Okay, well, we'll do some research and come back next month with this. Okay, yeah, I just want to, I primarily did this because this is the big project for this year is that little stretch of Emerson and going down first. And I'd rather get rid of the problems before they're major problems. And yeah. Now, first street north, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we know how many linear feet or miles of sidewalk that we have in the city? Um, I would have to double check, but there is quite a bit. I mean, okay. it's miles. miles. Yeah. yeah, that'd be useful. Yeah, I'll find out. Going, you know, to what's the scope of the problem? What's the scope of the issue? I, I have no idea. Drive around, you'll see. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got a nice sidewalk in front of my house. <laughs> <laughs> You're in North Ridge. Well, <laughs> anyways. Okay, yeah, if we could look into them points that we made, that's great. Uh, going on, us. Uh, they put these back on. It's a city framer, you know, that's not right. City planner updates. Uh, yeah, well, so being that I'm here, I don't have much for you. Um, we, we did just want to update you that we um, have received uh, an application for one uh, development project. Uh, uh, Overson. Yep, the Overson edition, uh, 13 townhomes uh, over on Garfield. Um, it's on Garfield and uh, second, just south of the, yeah, just south of the train tracks, uh, north of uh, north of an apartment complex there. Is uh, that with, excuse me, is that with Pfeiffer? It is, yep. Okay, because Roy had told different, told them even about that, that 
he had this land, then it would be nice to get it. Yep, they want to develop it. Yep, they're, they're working on developing it. They, That's um, good. they submitted their application and materials, and we're just kind of going through the final kind of steps to get everything together, and we'll likely have a public hearing at our next planning zoning meeting for that. Okay, thank you. That's good. We need homes. We need apartments or that for in this community. That's, no, that's all. That's all I have for you. Okay. Thank you, and welcome aboard too. Thank you. I'm looking forward to working with you. Um, no other discussion. Uh, next meeting will be Wednesday, June 9th, 2021, at the community center here at 7 p.m. Make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned at 7.50. Thank you.